impermanent loss in liquidity pools, an explanation of the entire mechanism, everything you need to know to stay safe. If you've ever used liquidity pools or are considering delving into them and have come across the term impermanent loss, you're likely wondering what it entails and whether it poses a threat to your funds. I'll show you, based on examples, why such a loss exists and how it affects funds in both bull and bear markets. In the case of staking, we simply lock up one of our cryptocurrencies for a specified period to receive profits. Although we expose ourselves to risks related to price volatility during staking, as the cryptocurrency's price can both rise and fall, something like impermanent loss doesn't apply to us. However, in liquidity pools, which operate in a slightly different way, this additional aspect comes into play. Let's start with a brief introduction. How do liquidity pools differ from staking? Liquidity pools can be described as programmed algorithms where we can deposit our funds, ensuring the functionality of decentralized exchange trading platforms. This may sound somewhat complex, so let's break it down with an example. The visible side is the decentralized exchange of the Osmosis project. On the screen, we see the Osmo token paired with USDC. In this case, Osmo represents the entire platform while USDC is a stablecoin with a fixed value of $1. Unlike traditional exchanges like Binance or BitGet, there's no order book on such exchanges. Instead, transactions are facilitated by the previously mentioned liquidity. If we want to benefit from the fees collected by the liquidity pool, we need to contribute our liquidity to the pool, earning a proportionate reward relative to other participants. The pool displayed on the screen operates on a 50-50 basis. For example, to add liquidity worth $100, we must deposit $50 in USDC and an equivalent amount in osmosis. Deposited funds go into a pool where an algorithm uses them to execute buy and sell transactions as requested by traders. Simultaneously, we receive a portion of the trading fees collected with each executed order. Returns in such scenarios vary significantly and depend mainly on the trading volume and the size of the pool. If the turnover is high and the pool is small, profits can be substantial. Conversely, if there's a large pool but minimal trading activity, the profits might be modest. Sometimes the monthly turnover might be low, but a lively market weekend can suddenly generate as much activity as the entire month. Hence, it's crucial to consider annual percentage yield over an extended period because focusing on the data from the past few days can be misleading. Now let's talk about impermanent loss concerning the contract. This concept arises because a programmed mathematical algorithm manages the funds. When the value of the coin we've deposited increases by 200%, it doesn't mean we'll make the same profit. The gains will be substantial, but less than 200%, because during the entire value increase, a portion of our appreciating osmosis will be consistently sold for USDC to maintain the 50-50 balance. This ultimately means we'll profit, but not as much. The same scenario occurs when the value of Osmo starts to decline. During a 50% decrease, we'll also incur losses, but as our osmosis depreciates, some USDC will be converted into Osmo tokens to preserve the balance, resulting in a loss less than 50%. We will now analyze this example based on specific calculations using the calculator available on the Daily DeFi website. I will provide the link below this video. Let's assume that token A is our stablecoin with a value of $1 and token B is Osmo, whose initial value I will also set at $1 for transparency and clarity in the calculations. In the second part, we present the values of these coins after a certain period. In this case, the value of coin A remains unchanged. The stablecoin will still be worth $1. However, in the previous example, I mentioned a 200% increase in Osmo, resulting in a value of $3 per unit. 
In this scenario, if we were to hold 500 USDC and 500 Osmo in our portfolio without doing anything, after the price changed to $3, the total value of our portfolio would increase to $2,000. If all these coins were in a liquidity pool, the tokens would ultimately be exchanged to maintain proportions. This would result in having 866 units of stablecoin and 288 units of Osmo with a value of $1732, indicating an impermanent loss of about 13%. You may be wondering why participate in a liquidity pool if the profit is less than simply waiting and holding funds in the wallet. I'll give you two reasons. Firstly, to the amount of $1732, you need to add the commission earned for participating in the pool, which varies and depends on the turnover. It can sometimes be small amounts and sometimes very large. We cannot calculate it in advance. The second thing is that we never know how much a particular token will increase in value. By participating in the liquidity pool, we earn from trading fees and we cannot immediately sell our tokens due to the waiting period for unlocking, called unbonding. Having all these coins available for immediate sale, with the possibility of selling, the vast majority of people simply sell them with a profit of 10, 20, maybe 50% as these are very good results. It's challenging to sell such coins at the perfect peak, earning the highest possible percentage. Of course, we can try and hope for it to succeed, but there is no guarantee. Therefore, analyzing both scenarios, it may turn out that if you are not a sophisticated trader, the liquidity pool will give you a greater profit in the long run. However, this is a very individual matter and should be considered based on your experience and expectations. Remember, if we decide to withdraw funds from the pool, we'll also need to endure a waiting period known as unbonding. The withdrawn amount will be the result of fluctuations, both upward and downward, along with the fees collected from other users. There are numerous types of liquidity pools, considering the vast variety of existing cryptocurrencies. Each decentralized exchange has its currency pairs, some better than others, with varying levels of safety. Hence, it's crucial to carefully consider the pools we engage in. Given the rapidly changing landscape, I can't precisely guide you on where to find such pools and which ones are worth your attention. Certainly, in every situation, one should exercise particular caution and only engage with proven decentralized platforms that have already established a reputation in the world of cryptocurrencies. Unfortunately, there is a consistent emergence of numerous services and currency pairs that are nothing more than scams, aimed at acquiring capital from gullible users who believe in several hundred percent annual returns. Personally, I avoid such places, allowing me to continue participating in the market. In conclusion, if you are looking for a complete cryptocurrency training, check out my crypto guide on Udemy. The link is below this video. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments. Good luck.